Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India number 36 we have been discussing about the restricted three body problem and we derived the equation of motion in synodic frame okay and these are the equation three equations we have already derived now we need to solve it so these equations cannot be solved explicitly, but we can get a generalized solution solution in implicit form. And for this what we need to do that we multiply equation 1 by 2 x dot equation 2 by 2 y dot and equation 3 by 2 z dot and add all the equations. If we do that, so we get here, if we look into this, so we get here 2 x dot times x double dot plus 2 y dot times y double dot plus 2 sorry uh, z dot times z double dot so here uh, what we are doing currently we are taking this term okay, and multiplying it by correspondingly 2 x dot 2 y dot and 2 z dot. Similarly, next we will take up this term and this term this is the second term and uh, then thereafter we will take up these two terms okay, because in the correspondingly in the z this and this second uh, and third terms are not present on the left hand side. So, this and then we have the other terms minus 2 omega y dot and 2 omega x dot minus 2 omega y dot and then this multiplied by x dot Okay, and uh, and moreover, one uh, we are multiplying it by two x dot. So I will write it separately here: two x dot multiplied by two x dot. Similarly, the term from here will get two omega x dot. So uh, this is plus two omega x dot times two y dot. And thereafter, the terms we take omega square x. So, this becomes 2 omega square x times x dot, okay. and this is with minus sign. And then 
in the y term omega square y. So, this is 2 omega square y times y dot. In the z, these terms are uh, uh, equation pertaining to the z component, it is a 0, uh, those parts are 0, therefore, those are not taken into account here in this place. So, now on the right hand side, we will have to multiply all these things. So, we have uh, minus mu 1 by r 1 cube times x minus x b 1. This first term we have taken here and this multiplied by 2 times. So, we can put here and x dot we can put in this place. Similarly, the other term we will have 2 times mu 2 divided by r 2 whole cube x plus x b 1 and x b 2 times x dot. This term we have picked up then r 2 whole cube. Okay. Thereafter, the rest of the terms from here next we pick up this term from this place. Okay. So, this is 2 mu 1 by r 1 q y times y dot minus 2 mu 2 by r 2 q y times y dot. Similarly, we will have 2 mu 1 by r 1 q z times z dot and minus 2 mu 2 r 2 whole q z times z dot. In this equation, you can see that this term and this term they cancel out because here we have minus sign and this place we have the plus sign. These two terms we can write as d by d t x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square. You can check this if you differentiate you get this term. Similarly, this term can be written here as d by d t omega square x square plus omega square y square. And on the right hand side, we have to copy all these things, but before that we need to work out a little bit more to uh, comprehend the right hand side. So, I will simply write here this is L h s equal to this, this equal to R h s the quantity the whole thing is to be copied here. I am just skipping this copying from this place to that place. Now, we need to work out first this term. I am going to work out this term. Okay. Now, let us look into the first term minus mu 1 by r 1 q x b 1. So, this term is nothing but dou y dou x 1 by r 1. Now, on the right hand side this side uh, if you expand this. So, you can see from this place this becomes minus 1 by r square dou r 1 by dou x. Where r 1 square equal to x minus x b 1 square plus y square plus z square. So, this implies then 2 r 1 times dou r 1 by dou x will be equal to 2 x minus x b 1 and this implies dou r 1 by dou x equal to x minus x b 1 divided by r 1.
therefore do by do x 1 by r 1 equal to minus 1 by r square do r 1 by do x 1 by this becomes 1 by r 1 cube x minus x b 1 okay. or so you can see that uh, here we have to write the mu 1 so mu 1 is missing So, what we see that if we multiply this side by mu 1, already we have got dou r by r 1 by dou x and if we insert here in this place, this is what we are getting. So, if simply it is a visible that uh, this term is indeed equal to this term. So, based on the same uh, kind of derivations, similarly we will have dou by dou x. 1 by r 2 and then we multiply it with uh, mu 2 this quantity will be minus mu 2 by r 2 cube x plus x b 2 where r 2 a square this equal to x plus x b 1 a square and plus as we have written in the earlier lecture y a square plus z a square. So, following the same notation you can see that uh, uh, whatever we have done on the previous page, so, uh, we can get this quantity here. In the same way we have mu 1 by dou by 1 by r 1 r 2 equal to minus mu 2 by r 2 q y and along the same line we have uh, mu 1 dou by dou z 1 by r 1 R2 cube and z. Okay, after getting this, now we insert all these results in the right hand side of the previous equation. So, here let us mark this as uh, equation, let us mark this as equation 1, 2, 3, we have written earlier. One, two, three. We are using here. So this will mark as equation four. Using above results in equation four yields d by d t x dot a square plus y dot a square z dot a square minus d by d t omega a square x a square plus y a square and then we use all these results. So, for Therefore, all these terms will we can replace. So, this becomes this term will get reduced to 2 times dou by dou x 1 by r 1. So, here we write separately 2 mi 1 times. Okay. 
and then x dot is there this term is there. So, therefore, we write here x dot So, this way we have 2 mu 1 dou by dou x 1 by r 1 times x dot minus sign will go and then we will have 2 mu 2 dou by dou x 1 by r 2 times x dot plus 2 mu 1 dou by dou by So, in sorting the above uh, all these results in equation 4, this is what we are getting. Now, we can uh, write it in, in a little better way. Okay, uh, from this place, what we do that uh, we rewrite all these terms this term we rewrite as 2 times mu 1 by r 1 because this is a constant dou by dou x plus 2 mu 2 by r 2 x dot which is nothing but d x by d t. Similarly, the next term this one can be written as dou by dou by here 2 mu 1 by r 1 plus 2 mu 2 by r 2 and d y by d t and the third term we can write as dou by dou z. Okay, and let us write uh, 2 mu 1 by r 1 plus 2 mu 2 by r 2 this as f. So, this is a function of x y z. So, if we do that so the wave of equation gets reduced to d by d t y dot square plus z dot square all these terms we are picking up from this place. So, this is dou x by this is this quantity we are writing as f and therefore, you can see that this is dou f by dou x dou x times d x by d t the next term then becomes dou f by dou y d y by d t dou f by d z by d t. And of course, there is the term 2 is there. So, let us remove this 2 from this place.
So, then we can have a factor 2 here appearing like this and the right hand side is nothing but 2 you can see this is the partial differential we have written of the function to, uh, this part is partial differential. So, the total differential here we get as d f by d t because f is a function of x y and z. In this right hand side left hand side we copy here in this place. So, integrating we get square minus omega square 2 f minus c and this we call as the Jacobi integral. Now, left, left hand side we can recognize as this is the v a square term. And this equation is of great use in understanding uh, what is the behavior of the three particle system. Especially we can write this as v a square equal to omega a square x a square plus y a square plus 2 mu 1 by r 1 plus 2 mu 2 because f we have defined like that. And uh, let us put this as C prime okay, instead of writing C here. If we divide both sides by 2, Okay, this quantity we write as u and the same way this equation actually this is 2 u minus c prime or c because we are later on going to use this various values of the c. So, uh, okay, uh, we will remove this, we will use the term like the C 0, C 1, C 2, C 3 for C. So, we will remove it for the time being. So, it can be put here in this format. Okay, let us forget about this, uh, what is this is indicating and uh, all other things related to this at this stage. Now, we go uh, further and uh, first we normalize these things. We want to look at the normalized scale. What does it mean? Uh, let us look into that. Okay. Normalized scale use. So, we are going to treat it in a way where we define m 1 plus m 2 this equal to 1. So, therefore, you can see that 
if we write m 2 equal to mu star ok, then m 1 will be equal to 1 minus mu star ok. Similarly, the distance between mass m 1 and m 2 here we have mass m 1 this is the mass m 2. So, this distance we can write as r 1 2. So, r 1 2 we will take this as unity. So, this also gets normalized this distance and m 3 of course, uh, it is somewhere and uh, there is synodic frame located here in this place. Now, uh, this is your point B. because this is the point B is the center of mass of the mass m 1 and m 2 and therefore, and this from here you are writing as mu star and this as 1 minus mu star. So, immediately you can see that 1 minus mu star or we know from our the basic definition of the center of mass, because already we have considered this to be x b 1 and this quantity to be x b 2. So, mass uh, this magnitude wise ok, these are magnitude wise. So, therefore, from the center of mass definition if we are writing in magnitude wise this will be equal to m 2 times x b 2. Okay. So, m 1 from this place if we pick up this as 1 minus mu star and m 2 is from this place in mu star times x b 2. So, immediately you can see that the x b 2 then becomes this quantity becomes on the normalized scale 1 minus mu star and this quantity becomes mu star. This is magnitude wise. So, this is the normalization what we are following. Moreover, earlier we have learned that if there are two masses m 1 and m 2 and distance between them is given by a. Okay. So, the time period of uh, time period of mass m 1 and m 2 either about the barrier center or either about m 1 or either about m 2 okay, it can be written as 2 pi a q by mu under root. where mu is nothing but g times m 1 plus m 2. So, from here we see that 2 pi by t this quantity is ok. Uh, let us write it this way only. Now, a q if we are writing a equal to 1 as I am indicating here this is on the normalized scale r 1 2 I have chosen as 1. So, this is now 1. So, here we write 1 and g m 1 plus m 2 we have chosen as 1. So, if we do that, so this gets reduced to t equal to 2 pi 1 by z under root. Okay. So, therefore, 2 pi by t this equal to omega will be equal to g under root. And if we choose if we if we write g equal to one, so immediately we can see that omega also gets reduced to one. So this is the normalized scale. this is a normalized scale discussion uh, uh, derivation. So, if, uh, omega now we use this omega 1 here in this place. So, you can see that this gets reduced to x square plus y square 2 mu 1 r 1 plus 2 mu 2 r 2 minus. So, 
So, once we are using the normalized scale, everything will be normalized. Now, R 1 and R 2 also this quantity all of them will be in the normalized form. Okay, so, with this uh, information our system gets reduced to a simple format and we can treat it in a much simpler way which will be very useful later on and I also I will do the same thing here I am using the normalized scale without normalization also we can work and I will do it little mm, later on. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, angular velocity omega this we are writing as 1 when normalization is done. So, finally, our equation it appears as v square equal to x square plus y square plus 2 times 1 minus mu star by r 1 because this is your quantity mu 1. Okay. Similarly, 2 times mu star divided by r 2 minus c. So, already we have written this is the Jacobi integral in the normalized form either this way or uh, this way you write or whatever earlier we have write it is all the same. We stop here finally, what we are going to do uh, if you see that if I set v equal to 0 okay, and this quantity already you have observed that we have written as 2 u in the non non normalized form. Okay. So, this is 2 u minus c. and u is a function of then x y uh, here also r 1 and r 2 they are the uh, dependent on x and y because this is the distance of the third body from the primary and the secondary body. So, what we observe that if we write this quantity as v a square equal to t u minus c or either phi minus c and set it to 0 as assuming that v equal to 0. So, this phi which is a function of x y z is equal to c this is the equation of a surface equation of a 3 d surface in the three dimension uh, three dimensional space this is the equation of the surface and using this we can get a lot of information which we will do little later. Before that we have to discuss about the Lagrange point. So, if, uh, in next lecture I am going to take up uh, that issue and uh, uh, elaborate it. Thank you very much.